as you mentioned, Marina, we do have now um, a, a, a very actionable, relevant mutation in the resistant setting uh, with T790M. It occurs in up to two-thirds of patients who develop resistance on an EGFR TKI. Uh, Chandra, you want to talk about the importance of why um, we need to identify this and what we're doing with this information in terms of the new drug and where we sit with this drug right now? I think OC Meriton, if you're talking uh, about, uh, which uh, also is called AZD 9291, uh, is a third generation EGFR inhibitor, which not only targets uh, the EGFR sensitizing mutations, which is exon 19 and 21, but also targets the T790M uh, resistance mutation. So I think uh, we are fortunate to have that drug, uh, and the drug uh, uh, approval was based on the study where uh, OC Meritinib uh, showed uh, an overall response rate close to 60 percent uh, in uh, expanded cohorts uh, uh, in this phase one, two trial. And uh, the overall median uh, progression-free survival was 9.6 months, as far as I remember. And uh, Mainly the responses were seen in patients who had T790M mutations because the response rate in uh, patients who did not have or who were negative for T790M was only 21 percent, and the median progression-free survival was, I think, 2.8 months. So I think that we have this drug now, so especially which targets a specific resistant mutation, which is T790M, and has impressive and provocative uh, degree of both the response rate and progression-free survival. So I think uh, we have this. And in addition, actually, uh, as it targets both the uh, sensitizing mutations, which is uh, exon 19 and exon 21, it is also a benefit in the frontline setting. So in the frontline setting, actually, the uh, response rates have been as high as 70 percent. So in two cohorts, 60 percent and 80 percent. So the data is early there, but uh, with uh, disease control rates which approach 97 to 100 percent, I think it is impressive, and whether it will uh, replace the first generation inhibitors is yet to be uh, determined. And can you but talk a little bit about the interest. toxicity profile as well? In the context right. of first and second generation TKIs, what we're seeing or what you're witnessing in your practice and what we saw in the data? So actually the toxicity profile is uh, pretty good for these third generation inhibitors, the, especially OC meritinib. Uh, we, because it spares wild-type EGFR, uh, though you see some element of diarrhea and rash, but it is not uh, as what you see with the first-generation inhibitors. And and, Tommy, just uh, to add to that, you know, uh, we kind of have a control because right. all the There's patients no today have had our lives. Right. Right. And I have to say, in my practice, all but one said it's easier. Easier. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. course, it's human beings. One of them exactly. said it was harder. So I think but, because uh, of its wild-type uh, sparing effect, uh, you see the, the toxicities that have been seen are uh, pneumonitis to the extent of about 2% uh, in the study. And there is some element of QT prolongation as seen with other uh, TKIs. So I think those are the two uh, main toxicities uh, which have been seen with the drug. But overall, actually, it is a, a wonderful drug which is fairly well tolerated. And in oncology, it's probably one of the first ones to have uh, so little toxicity. Yeah, I've been very encouraged by both its efficacy and its adverse event profile. We participated in the EAP, um, and, and importantly in that study, they allowed plasma only. We identified all of our patients for that trial based on plasma. It really highlights, you know, plasma is reliable. If it's positive, you can use that um, to drive treatment decisions, but the the toxicity profiles, as, as Mark mentioned, in the context of first-generation TKIs is, is, is much better tolerated. Uh, so it's been, a, I think it's been a win for, for, for patients and for physicians. If I could just throw into I think we've become too tolerant of the rash and diarrhea. I mean, it, it really does affect our patients. First off, the rash is obvious. Uh, and, and secondly, how many people have to change their day because of the diarrhea? You know, when I have the big meeting, I have to do this. I mean, you know, they, they think about these things. And if we have a way around it and we can take that concern out of their lives, I, th I think that we, uh, that's a good thing. Again, helping to make my case for giving these drugs up front. But I think we underestimate how lifestyle disrupting the rash and diarrhea is. And taking doxycycline for the rest of your life and smearing yourself with Accovate five times a day, you know, that's not wonderful. No, it's... It you know, it, it's interesting when we were talking about the algo progression patients. I think I, I, I agree with what you were saying. My my standard has been if there's just one or two sites of progression, 
try to radiate and then continue on with what you were doing to try to get the most out of it. But you know, now with this, with the new generation of drugs, I'm not sure that we're doing patients favor. I, I'm not sure it makes sense to get the most out of it. Maybe it makes sense to switch them. I, I don't know. I mean, I think this is a case by case uh, discussion. But I mean, if you're if there's progression at one site and we know these drugs are so much better tolerated, maybe it makes some sense to switch them earlier. I, 